Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelov, and this is Speedplay France and Hearts of Iron 4, number 17. We left off having taken over Turkey, Iraq, moving into the Suez Canal Zone, having taken half of it, but not the other half. We have a lot of mechanized units on their way, though. We are pressing the Allied forces further east throughout Central Asia and Siberia and all of that. Hopefully we will be able to destroy them all fairly rapidly. I can't imagine they have anywhere near enough supplies to be combat effective, so I don't think it'll be too difficult. Also, the Japanese have attacked them in their rear, which is great, and probably done a bit of damage to them that way. And, uh, yeah, so we're generally just going to keep attacking wherever we possibly can. Hopefully just do as much damage as possible to the Allies, with the least damage being done to us. We are under 400,000 manpower now. So we're getting desperately close to the point where we're going to have to change our manpower laws. We also have had total economic mobilization, which does take, I believe, 2.5% of our manpower pool out of the rotations, out of the circulation, however you want to call it. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, change that up in a way that will keep us armed, give us enough troops under, arm in order to, under arms in order to just keep the military effective for as long as we need it to be. We are still just gunning it forward throughout all of these wasteland-ish areas. Our infantry is starting to show up now, which is decent, and hopefully they will be able to provide the main, uh, really just wall of forces. We are also advancing around Alexandria right now, which is great news. Hopefully we will be able to take that area fairly quickly. And, uh, yeah, just really do harm to the Allies' ability to project force in the Mediterranean. Also, hopefully we'll kick them out of Central Asia fairly soon. I'm not going to really focus on the Japanese. Uh, right now we are attacking uh, mainly just into Africa, trying to get a good foothold there. Uh, in Central Asia, the plan is really just to push over to the Japanese and then not really do much in against them, just leave that front more or less static and on its own. Since I feel like the Japanese are less powerful than the Allies, and I would prefer that they exist for a little while so that they can uh, continue to fight the Allies while we also fight the Allies. We are also pressing against Cairo and Alexandria and trying to rush around through the desert wastelands of Egypt in an attempt to encircle as many of these British forces as we possibly can and uh, just overrun them, really. It looks as though we are facing a bit of uh, unfortunately large uh, just uh, resistance in a few areas. Not really anything that will stop us, hopefully, although that does remain to be seen. Now, uh, we're also probably going to have to eventually reorganize our military, just since we always seem to have to do that. Ultimately, though, we're still winning in all of the battles that we're fighting, so that's good. We also have our justification against Iran done, so we can hopefully march against them in a moment. We also have a decent number of forces all on the border, so we're going to go ahead and just start charging on in. We also started fabricating a claim on Afghanistan. So our forces are just charging forward pretty much everywhere. It looks like we're winning in most places, which is pretty great. We can also now start building synthetic oil and rubber facilities, which we start to do since we are just cripplingly in need of that. And uh, yeah, the Allied presence in Russia is almost completely gone. We've taken over the entirety of the Suez Canal Zone. We're going to try to rush up to our old African colonies, hopefully take those back. And yeah, so long as we're able to just maintain all of these advances, we should be more or less pretty good to go. Uh, once Iran falls, we'll be able to charge directly into British India. That should hopefully be a wide enough front that they'll have some gaps and we'll be able to pour through. That is at least the plan. We also should probably take over Saudi Arabia and all those Arabian Peninsula bits just to get more oil since we are really just desperately in need of oil and rubber, but we can't get rubber quite so easily. And our forces are just gunning it over into Egypt, pressing them down through the Nile and just around in various portions. Hopefully we will be able to take care of all of this in the fairly near future. We are also pressing forward deeper into Iran, hopefully going to take over their victory points and just force them to capitulate in the near future. It looks as though their army is fighting us decently well in one area, so we'll just surround them. We are fighting the Japanese a little bit, more than I would totally prefer, uh, however not so much that it's really concerning. And yeah, we're hopefully going to be able to encircle all of these British forces in the next few moments, and hopefully all of these as well. And there are just a weirdly large number of enemy forces just throughout Africa. 
So that's probably going to be the next major battlefield, although there's nothing really worth fighting for in Africa, so we're probably going to just advance until all strategic areas are pretty decently secure, and then more or less hold off. Except maybe to launch some large encirclements. In Iran, we really need to make Iran capitulate so we can just force all our forces uh, throughout their country and then just forward and defeat them. Those British forces have all been encircled, hopefully we'll just get rid of all of them pretty soon. And we're probably going to have to pull more forces over into Africa to actually be able to encircle ple er, people and places. Uh, in Iran, we're getting a little bit bogged down. However, we have already taken their capital and many, many other key points. And hopefully we'll be able to take over all of these territories again, get that line back in place. And yeah, hopefully we'll get this all more or less worked out. The Iranians are falling rather rapidly, which is pretty great news. There they go, they've capitulated. Now we'll just destroy those two pocketed forces, get our troops onto the border of the British Indian territories, keep pressing down in Egypt, just push everybody as far south as we can and hopefully destroy some of their armies while we're at it. Generally, the goal is to just keep advancing, destroying all of these peripheral bits, and really do as much harm as we can to the Allies. Unfortunately, we are probably just a moment away from, there we go, we are below 300,000 manpower, so the clock is definitely ticking on our ability to just keep the war going, honestly. It is, and unfortunately our infantry is just charging headlong into the Japanese, which is not at all what I want to do, and we probably took a lot of losses with that. Now, uh, ultimately, though, so that probably did a huge amount of damage to our manpower reserves. Not really a huge amount, but enough that really it does affect us negatively. And yeah, that's one of the big issues, is even though we are doing very well just encircling and destroying allied armies in a way that makes it so they can hardly resist whatsoever, they are still resisting whatsoever. And that is maybe going to be something that will do a lot of long-term damage to our ability to conquer the world. I'm also not entirely certain when the game ends. There are texts that go up to 1950. I could just Google it. I really should have done that by now. But uh, Hearts of Iron 3, I believe, ended in 1948, so we may only have four extra years to do this. However, if we manage to get the oil or uh, the rubber facilities of Southeast Asia, once we get control over those, it'll be a fairly quick uh, jaunt to just creating an air force large enough to overrun the English Channel, just dominate the English uh, Channel navally, and hopefully knock England out of the war. From there, it's just a hop, skip, and jump away from the United States and then really just domination of the whole world. We'll probably have to go very heavily in naval activities, uh, naval landings on the various remaining states, and just moving our mechanized and armored forces into the positions where they'll actually be able to, you know, make gains achievably. Ultimately, it's, uh, it's still going to be a long slog, but the most important thing is that we are pushing the Allies back everywhere we're fighting them. We are running very, very low on manpower, but we're also gaining a lot of territory. We're gaining a lot of territory, weakening the Allies' ability to resist as we go, and hopefully in the near future we'll take control over a decent portion of the world's rubber, and then just be able to dominate. Now, uh, how exactly that's going to go remains to be seen. We are pressing into Saudi Arabia, India, all the way down into the Sudan. We are doing well. That is undeniable, even back into French Algeria. We are stuck at this river. I uh, believe it might be like the Indus River. I certainly hope so. And uh, just really carving through Pakistan and all that. We are not doing poorly. The AI is messing with our lines in some areas, just moving key units away from where they're supposed to go, which is just immediately <laughs> annoying, just rather annoying. But we are doing well. We're pushing the Allies back. We are making progress. We're losing a lot of men, though we do still have a few uh, different texts, or not texts, I guess policies or laws that we can go to. At this point, I'm getting a little redundant with that since that is kind of a terrible worry. We are also going to stop production of mechanized units in the near future since uh, producing new units definitely does take out of our manpower pool. The issue is that further 
Further conscription laws increase the training time for our units, so I want to get as many units as we hopefully will need out before uh, we change to a harsher law. Now we might just turn off total economic mobilization. We do have enough political power that we'll be able to switch it back when we do go to a harsher, a harsher law for manpower. And it really just remains to be seen how far we're going to have to go and how well we can shuffle all of that. I, however, am fairly confident that if we can just push our way to the rubber facilities of Southeast Asia and take decisive control over them, before we run out of manpower, and ideally before we even have to switch to the last manpower law, we will be able to win this war. Now, it is a little up in the air and we're definitely terribly outnumbered, but our armies are more modernized, they're fighting better, they have a level of strategic vision that the AI just cannot match. We've got a lot of things going for us as we conquer this world. They also have a lot of things kind of working against us. Now, uh, really, I guess that's really what the rest of the series is going to be, is seeing where that balances out. Although, as we press through British India, it's hard to see them doing too much against us. And yeah, so that is really the situation as it stands. We're also researching early strategic bombers. I'm not sure if we will end up having to rely on a strategic bombing uh, command sort of thing, although I do think it's important that we start to invest in it. I also am not sure if the allies, such as the United States, are going to start uh, producing nuclear bombs and using them against us, which means that we're really, really going to have to worry about anti-air uh, air forces getting enough fighters in order to actually defend our air forces or in order to defend our facilities and hopefully shoot down any American atomic bombing efforts. It's going to be a really interesting thing, honestly, to see if that ends up happening. I don't know if the AI uses nukes. I imagine they probably do. Hopefully, perhaps. I mean, hopefully in the sense of for the game. We also just finished rocket engines so we can start doing jet technologies, hopefully get a jet air force so that hopefully our smaller air force will just be able to win due to superiority, which is what we've been doing with our army, so I mean it does make sense. Hopefully that's how that will work. And we are just pressing everybody further and further away from our core territories with the obvious and potentially fatal uh, exception of the British home islands, which are worryingly close to Paris. And we are only at 35% national unity, and we don't actually have very many troops located there. I'm probably going to move some additional forces there between now and the next episode, or I guess in the beginning of the next episode. At any rate, though, we are carving our paths through British India. Saudi Arabia has surrendered, so we go ahead and fabricate claims against Yemen and Oman. And we are going to try to deal with that last remaining allied unit. Hopefully clear out all of these pocketed bits, and then just turn against those two remaining free states. We only have like one or two oil uh, demand not being met right now since we have gone uh, quite a way to just capturing the production facilities, which is really good news. Rubber is still a really significant issue for us. However, now that we're in India and hopefully can carve our way over to places like Singapore, which produces a ton of rubber, we will be able to just rectify that. I'll also have to check the resource, resource map mode to see if there are any rubber production facilities in Africa that we can maybe direct our troops towards. And yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, something or other appears to have changed and we're at almost 300,000 manpower. I'm not sure how that is affected. If manpower uh, maybe goes over every month, I'm not sure. We already just immediately dropped to 240 something thousand manpower. So manpower is definitely a weird kind of ethereal, but also incredibly real and potentially very just too real of an issue that we're going to have to deal with as time goes on. We also are back up to 900 factories just producing things for us, including a massive number of synthetic oil facilities, which will hopefully continue to bridge the gap. At any rate, we leave off having 100,000 additional ca casualties against the Japanese, who have slightly less than that, that's due to our infantry just charging into them. And the Allies have 1.5 million more losses to our something like 160,000 more losses, 180,000 more losses. So we're taking a lot of casualties, so are the Allies. 
hopefully it'll overwhelmingly work in our benefit to the extent that we'll be able to win despite our lack of manpower. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.